Welcome back to 42nd Street, episode four. Last time we finished off just outside of Bryant Park and reached the New York Public Library. Now, we, we could obviously, obviously give you an entire episode on the New York Public Library, but here are some gems. There are 92 branches, 53 million items, and over 3.5 million members. Guess who's one of them? Boom. It is the second largest public library in the U.S. after the Library of Congress and the third in the world after the British Library. This is a reference library, a research library. Access to those 2.5 million volumes are gained by the book train. The New York Public Library was founded in 1895, but this building on the corner of 42nd and 5th Avenue wasn't completed until 1911. Before it was a library, it was the location of the Croton Distribution Reservoir, the remnants of which can still be found in the basement. Again, we can't do a whole episode on the New York Public Library, but if you do come and visit, I'm sure you'll be able to discover a bunch, including the original stuffed animals that inspired the characters from Winnie the Pooh. The names of the lions protecting the library are Patience and Fortitude, both of which you will need when navigating 42nd Street. Let's move. As we cross Fifth Avenue, we enter East 42nd Street, and in just a couple of blocks, we reach Grand Central Terminal. Same deal, right? We could do a whole episode, but here's some fun stuff. Created by the Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt, there have been train depots here since 1871. But after a train crash in 1902 and the new feasibility of electric trains, Grand Central Terminal was opened to the public in 1913. That is the largest Tiffany glass clock in the world, surrounded by the Roman gods Mercury, Hercules, and Minerva. Speed, strength, and wisdom to keep all of our trains on time. They got their work cut out for them too, as this is arguably the largest train terminal in the world with its 44 platforms and three quarters of a million visitors every single day. That's more people than live in Seattle. That's a bigger population than Alaska. Let's go join them. I don't know how familiar you are with the constellations of the Northern Hemisphere, but it didn't take long for people to notice that they're actually flipped on the east-west axis. Vanderbilt himself said it was the point of view of God looking down on the heavens as opposed to us looking up but a lot of people think it was just a quick fix. I'm sure you can imagine how difficult it would be to clean the ceiling 12 stories up. Natural grime built up over the years, but it was tobacco smoke that created so much tarnish that you couldn't even see the constellations. After two years of cleaning in 1998, the ceiling was re-revealed and they left some of the tarnish up there. You can still find it. It's a black rectangle on the northwest corner of the ceiling, just below the cancer sign. Tobacco, cancer don't smoke. The Vanderbilt family crest is adorned with acorns and oak leaves. From a tiny acorn comes a mighty oak. And this theme of acorns and oak leaves is found throughout the entire building, even on top of the very famous meeting point of the information booth's $20 million opal-faced clock. See the acorn? We can check out this hidden mural by Edward Turnbull from 1927 as we make our way to the Grand Central Market featuring local businesses down into the dining concourse. The seating area designed to look like the inside of a passenger car with the original oak benches from the waiting room of 1913 over to the Oyster Bar, Grand Central's oldest tenant. It's been here since 1913 and can be found just beyond the Whispering Gallery. Now, these are called Guastavino tiles. Rafael Guastavino and his son, Rafael Guastavino Jr., patent this style of archway and tile work. It's called the Whispering Gallery because as you can see, when one stands in a corner and speaks, the sound of their voice travels over the ceiling to the other corner. People always look like they're in trouble here. They look back on their family vacation photos and ask, why was Uncle Steve put in the corner? All right, we're gonna show you how it works. This is my microphone. And now, you can't hear me. You need New York to be talking. All right, let's hit the streets. And if you do hit the streets, please do so safely. Cover your mouth and nose, practice social distancing, and wash your hands. We will see you next time for our final leg down 42nd Street. Like, subscribe, be safe, and we'll see you real soon.